when I was a kid, I remember having this dream that I wanted to be a professional basketball player. I'd be playing hoops out in my driveway, and I just have this vision of me playing in the championship game, ball in my hands, three seconds left, two, one, game winner. The Lakers win the championship. It's fun to dream, isn't it? To visualize this ideal future of yourself. As we grow older, the act of dreaming seems to fade a little bit. The world becomes more and more difficult. Our challenges become harder and harder. I'd like to invite you all to do this little exercise with me right now, okay? It's gonna be a small 15 second exercise, but I want you to envision and imagine yourself up here right now. And you're giving a speech, not just a speech, the best, the most inspirational, motivational speech you could ever give. You, yourself, up here doing that, okay? So 15 seconds, just humor me here. We're gonna close our eyes, and we're gonna envision that about ourselves. So go ahead, 15 seconds. All right, we can go ahead and open our eyes now. I'd like to congratulate you all on completing a training session on public speaking. You heard me correctly. See, studies have shown that simply visualizing yourself doing something actually develops that skill and helps you to improve the skill, just as if you were actually doing it. Whoa. So you can see why visualization is a very powerful tool to have in your toolkit. You see, what we think defines who we are. I'm gonna say that one more time because it's really important to understand that. What we think defines who we are and ultimately who we will be in the future. Let's talk about some science that supports this. Okay, our brains have what's called the reticular activation system. It's a network of neurons in our brains that act as filters. They're constantly scanning our environments and they're allowing certain information to come into our brain and blocks other information. And the reason why this is so important is because we cannot possibly take in all of the information that our senses are trying to bring to us. So we have this amazing filtration system in our brains, but what exactly determines what goes in and what goes out? And the answer, obviously, is you, your past, your experiences, your relationships, your environment. All of this formulate this system. And I want to give you a little example of how this system works to better understand it. Let's say that at some point in your life, you were asked to give a presentation or a speech. And you got up there, and you didn't perform as well as you would have liked to. You probably say to yourself, I am not a public speaker. My palms were sweaty. I stuttered. I was horrible. I just, I'm not, I can't do it. I'm not a good public speaker. You just created a filter in your brain that tells yourself that you're not a good public speaker. And what happens is, as you go throughout your life, as things come up in your environment, you're gonna find ways to prove this to be true, called confirmation bias, it's how the system works. And you can see how this could be dangerous because the truth is, is we oftentimes fill ourselves with self-doubt. We oftentimes tell ourselves that our dreams are too big. We can't possibly accomplish what we wanna accomplish. And you reaffirm yourself to this over and over again. The good news is that we can reprogram the system. If you think back to our little exercise, you were consciously making the decision about seeing yourself as successful, as being successful as a public speaker. And the more that you visualize yourself as this, the more your brain starts to actually internalize it and believe it. And what happens is that filter changes. So now you're gonna go throughout your day finding ways to confirm your belief that you're a good public speaker. You're gonna go and have a meeting with your team and instead of thinking about how maybe you didn't motivate them, you'll find ways to look at, hey, I did do this, I am good. Momentum will build and you'll start to actually become what you visualized. I'll admit, I never did become a professional basketball player. Obviously I'm standing here before you right now. <laughs> what I can tell you is that I worked my butt off towards that goal. I had failures along the way, I had a lot of successes along the way. Most importantly, I felt fulfilled along the way because I was working towards something that I believed in. So I wanna ask you this. If your life is not being defined by a vision of your future, then what is it being defined by? Your past successes? Your past failures? 
fear, anxiety, doubt. We have to become intentional, intentional about where we place our thoughts. How about we work on reprogramming our brains so we can become the person that we aspire to be? Wouldn't that make for a better world? Thank you.